I want you to see the video of the final uh, table of the World Series of Poker 2013. That was the year that I was out there playing in this event. There were 7,000 players, and now it was getting down to two players. The winner was going to win $8.5 million. I won 1,000. No, <laughs> I didn't win any that year. I think I got knocked out. But, uh, uh, but the, the loser still wins money, like three million, but they were in this hand that was, for this young man, changed his life. So let's watch it. What is amazing in this Texas Hold'em that predominantly men are playing, there are some women, but I think it's men are playing because they like the competition, they like kind of the bravado of playing bluffing, being stronger than another one. And if you ever see this on TV, the guys have sunglasses and they have headphones on and they have a hood on and different things. And uh, now I don't wear the sunglasses and I don't do the hoodie like that. But it is interesting because as I play with these guys, they don't know I'm a minister. So they're all there. And you know how guys get, when guys get together, they get a little rough talk. They're talking a little trash to one another, you know, as they go. And as you're playing in the tournament, you know, the strategy is that you are able to uh, win the hand, win the chips, make more, you knock people out, you move forward up the ladder. Kind of like a golf tournament in the same way. You're moving up the ladder. One of the things that I had to learn was that as I'm playing with these guys, you know, they love to kind of uh, intimidate you. Talk, uh, you know, you don't think you're as good as you really think you are. I know exactly what you have. Um, I can't believe you made that call. Oh, oh, there's this conversation. Now, when I first started out, I would get a little intimidated. I'd go, you know, well, maybe I don't really know what I'm doing here. These young guys know better than I do. And then I'd get a little scared and I'd get afraid. Or I might be afraid to really, when I'm supposed to go all in with all my chips, I wouldn't do it because I was afraid of losing. And I realized a lot of it was my fear stopped me from playing my best game. My fear stopped me from being able to understand the situation and what I was supposed to do. Or my lack of confidence. Or uh, because I listened to other people and thought they knew better than I did. Now, as I've gotten older, I've actually gotten better at the game. And as many of you know, I've uh, done very well in this. And this year, when I played in the World Series of Poker, I actually had my largest winning uh, I, out of 1,300 players. Uh, I made a deal, I was some of the top five, and I made a deal for um, uh, about $20,000 that I won. And I gave 10% to the church, I just want you to know, okay, okay, so. But part of it is because I was aware of knowing who I was and my own confidence. Now, how does that relate to the story of Jesus and for our lives? Well, here we hear the story of Jesus where the disciples have gone out and fishing. And what happens? The waves start to come. The waves start to come around them and they start getting afraid and they get scared. You know, what's going to happen, right? Jesus is off by himself. He probably hears the wind and he senses their fear, maybe can even hear their voices, because you know how voices carry over water. They hear they're crying out, what are we going to do? You know, they're yelling, get hold of things. And he senses probably their fear. And so he comes to them, and on the back of your bulletin, you'll see some questions that you can answer as we go through this. Because one of the questions were... Um, what time was it when the storm came upon them? It was about 3 o'clock in the morning. And who at first did they think Jesus was? They thought Jesus was a ghost, the scripture says. They didn't recognize Jesus at first, right? 
They thought he was a ghost. Now it's interesting, just in that, sometime our fear, our, our lack of confidence, our unsuredness, our unsteadiness confuses us. We can't really see what we need to see, and they couldn't recognize Jesus. Maybe sometimes in your life, you have found yourself feeling overwhelmed or confused or maybe a little unsteady of yourself. And you just couldn't see things in a clear way. Then the scripture says, Peter recognized and said, if it's you, Jesus, call on me and I'll come out to you. And so Jesus calls to him and what happens? Jesus, uh, Paul, Peter, steps out on the, onto the water and starts to walk towards Jesus. And then what happens? He looks around and he sees the water and he sees the things coming up the waves and it's scripture says he starts to sink. At first, when his focus was just on Jesus and just on what he believed Jesus could do with him, he was fine, but now the waves started coming up around him and he started to sink. Jesus reaches out to him and says, Oh, Peter, why do you doubt? How does that apply to our life? How are we like Peter in those times? Maybe you can think about your own life and the times when you have kind of lost your faith or lost your way, when you have felt the storms coming up around you and it feels like these storms are bigger than what you can handle. Peter saw the storms around him and his focus moved from his focus on his relationship with Jesus, his connection with Jesus, his trust in Jesus to seeing the storm and seeing the waves. And in his mind it was, the waves are going to swallow me, I'm going to sink. And what does he do? He begins to sink. <coughs> Has that ever happened to you? That maybe you're going along and now the waves are starting to come up. And you know what happens when we focus on the waves, when we focus on the storm coming ahead of us, you know what happens? It starts dragging us into the storm. It's almost like if we give our attention to something, we are drawn to it. When we give our focus towards Christ, when we give our focus and our understanding in who we are, we will rise above the storm. We will rise above which is going on. Because here's the reality. The storm, the waves around us right now, maybe they're waves of people unhappy. Maybe they're waves of something that's going on in your life that you're not sure of. Maybe they're waves of bills coming upon you and you don't know how that's going to get paid out. Those storm, that wave is temporal. It is only here and it will be gone at some point. Sometimes we give it so much weight that we let it bring us into the storm. You're following what I'm saying? When our focus is on where we are in relationship to Christ, who we are in Christ, where we are as a person of God, we can rise above the storm. But when we let our focus go to this reality, now some people say, Jerry, but the storm is there. The water is crashing in on the boat. What do you want me to do? I'm saying it's there, but don't let your focus be on the storm. Let your focus be as Jesus called to Peter on me. Take that step of faith that I will lead you through the storm. That's what I realized in Texas Hold'em. I got to the place where I lost my own confidence. I got to the place where I was afraid that if I risked it all and put it all in, I would lose. And you know what? If I lost, so what? I just lost. I wasn't 
a failure. I wasn't going to be destroyed. I wasn't going to happen. And sometimes in life, we're afraid of risking it all. We're afraid of putting it all out there because we're afraid we'll fail. Like somehow, if we fail, we're a bad person. No, we just fail. But that didn't mean that who we are in Christ is any different. You see, when, when we can know, when we are in tune with and aligned with our relationship with Christ, and we let that be the center, not the thoughts that come into us of all this other stuff around us that pull us away from Christ, then we can become strong and confident. You know, and, and last week I talked about this a little bit. Our thought is the beginning of our spiritual connection with God. We are in relationship with God. And our thought is the creating of the reality. The thought begins the creating of your reality. And if I think a thought for 17 seconds, it starts to become, um, have some type of, uh, of identity, of substance. If I ponder on that thought for 78 seconds, now a minute or two, it becomes present in me physically. I can feel it. So if I'm aware of somebody who's unhappy at work and somebody who's taking kind of shots and there are people who it feels like they're really not wanting the best for me. And I'm focusing on that. And I find it actually bringing myself into that sense. And I start to feel that way now. Now I'm in the midst of the storm. And I find myself sinking in, getting more depressed, getting more frustrated all day long. But if I can say, I know that's going on. But I know who I am in Christ. And I know who what the promises that Jesus said to me that trust in me and I will provide for you and I will lift you above the storm when I'm able to be in that way I rise above that and all of a sudden the storm will go away or at least it doesn't feel like it is that which is affecting me because I know who I am when we can have that sense of confidence and trust in ourselves with our relationship to God these external things are exactly that. They're external. <coughs> so often, when we get married, we say we're all in, right? And then after a little while, we go, oh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe I'm not really all in. Maybe it's getting a little rough. I, I, I'm rethinking this, you know. Now, there are some times when you are in a bad relationship that's an abusive relationship that's in a really destructive that is unhealthy altogether there are times to be divorced but there still are many people who are in a relationship who they so quickly want to just give up on it they say they're all in but they're really not all in they haven't really committed themselves to trying to work it out together. So often I'll have couples where one of the spouses will be willing to go to counseling and the other one will say, nope, I'm not going to counseling. Why not? I just don't believe in it. I won't do it. You mean you won't even give it a try? No, I ain't going to. Do you really care about the mess? Well, yeah, I do. But if it just would be this way, da, 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 we'd be fine. Well, I could tell they're really not all in. They're not all in in wanting the relationship really to happen. They're all in on their own point of view. So I want you to think a little bit about what that means to you to be all in with your relationship with Christ. Because so often, I don't know about you, but I'm that way where I kind of want a relationship with God, but then I also want this over here. And... And so I kind of walk the line and I realize it happens when it's a difficult time and the storms come up that I really say, God, I want to be all in. And sometimes that's when I become stronger in my relationship with Christ is in the most difficult of times. That's when I come to that understanding of who I am in Christ. Is there a 
thing that's going on in your life right now where you feel like there's some a storm coming overhead or maybe the waves are starting to rise up you see when those things we come to focus on them they will pull us there but hear the story and the promise that Jesus gives in this story he reaches out and he says to Peter come and Peter initially jumps out of the and he trusts that Jesus will provide for him and he's on his way until he starts to take notice and pay attention to the storm around him and then he starts to sing Jesus takes him by the hand and lifts him up may you know the promise that Jesus gives to each of us as we will know of who Jesus is in our life that you will allow him and say I'm all in with you Jesus I'm all in and when I'm all in with you I know that everything will be taken care of pray with